good evening good morning good afternoon depending on where you are and welcome to this program we are going to have a very very quick one because when you look at you know what we are experiencing or what we have seen happening in Biafra land with our politicians. If it is Mazen Nam the Kanu, he will tell you that no Nabaya Nyam Mili. If you look at what is going on, what happened in Biafra land, you know, I know that many of our people might look at those things believe that these things they have you know more especially what those politicians or political elite or so-called in the southeast what they said in a uh, ebony state today <laughs> you know there is something but before we go there i don't want to waste time let us go there let us go to that let us go to that um, news. Let us go to that news. Let us see ex actually what happened, you know, what those political leaders said. Because there is something that we need to let these people know. There is something that you need to know. But before I let you, to, I let you, you know, into that. I want you to pay attention to this, you know, visit of Boko Hari to Ebony State. The utterances, what they said, and everything. Let us just re recap on that before we proceed. Provision of good roads for government functions. Earlier, Mr. Mr. President was received by the chairman, traditional rulers Southeast, where he was uh, presented with the uh, Kola Nuts, was received in Igbo way, according to Igbo custom and tradition. Also, um, there have been speeches delivered earlier on by a member of the Hausa community who um, extolled the virtues of Governor Dave Omahi. He talked about how the government the the has made the Hausa community happy with projects in terms of infrastructure, provision of good roads, light, and other deliverables to the people of the Hausa community in the state. Also, the chairman of traditional council southeast made an agitation or an appeal rather an appeal yes indeed for mr president to temper justice with mercy this is exactly where i want to talk about this is exactly where i want to talk about that uh, i know that whoever that made that appeal to boko Hari, the mask we are in Asorok, who visited Imo State, sorry, um, Abony State. Maybe he meant well, maybe he, you know, it's just the way he understood things. But there is something I want our people to understand. There is something I want our people to know. There is nothing, you know, I want our people to know. The most important things that, you know, you need to prove to us. Uh, you know, so many of, of you are saying that uh, getting pre Igbo presidency 2023 is going to solve the problem. But I don't think so myself. All this Igbo elite, all these politicians in, uh, in Igbo land, all these politicians across Biafra land, of course, so many of our people, ha you know, has been biased because of small money that these politicians have given to them they are now talking rubbish we will run into the bush if they are not in the ocean in the water they will be in the bush making stupid videos 
you know, t telling you that they are politicizing whatever they are doing. These are people who are in, you know, you know people who are suffering, people who are dying, people who are starving to death, people who are unemployed, people who never receive service delivery from all these politicians. Now, I want to ask our dear elders and our dear leaders in Biafra land. There is a question that I want to ask, and that question goes this way. Do you really think that Mazen Namdekano committed a crime? That is the question I want to ask these political leaders in Biafra land. Do you really think that Mazen Namdekano committed a crime? Because the reason why I am actually asking this question is because the way these people are presenting themselves, the way they are presenting themselves in, in front of Buhari, begging Buhari. You know, when I listen to their approaches, it makes me like, it, I don't understand it. When I listen to their approach, it does not make sense. It does not make sense at all. The reason why I tell you that their approach does not make sense to me, maybe it might make sense to you, because they said they won presidency 2023. And another thing, them begging the Fulani for presidency 2023 is an, is a clear example that you people no follow. It is a clear example that you people no follow. And you no say you no follow, but you are forcing it. You are begging for your presidency. 2023. That is number one. Number two is that when you look at the situation of Mazen Namdekan, as those that are begging for presidency, even if the North or the Fulani said, okay, let's give Igbo presidency. Let us not go and vote. Or let us go out there and, and, you know, or let us not go and vote or because they will never vote for you. And another thing now, you want us to come home or to be there, the ones that are there, to now vote for you as Igbo presidency. When you cannot stand in your right, when you do not possess any right inside the cabals that rule Nigeria, does it, you know, do you think that we will actually give you another opportunity to go out there to represent us while you have never represented us in a state level? <laughs> there is something I want this political elite and Igbo elders to understand. Mazen Nam De Kano never committed any crime. Mazen Nam De Kano did not commit any crime. Rather, Mazen Nam De Kano is only or was only preaching for the betterment of our people, for better life. For our people. That was what Mazen Namdekan was advocating for. He never committed no crime. So why then are you always begging Mr. President, please tamper justice with mercy? Why are you asking the Mr. President to tamper justice with mercy? That means you people are actually condoning evil. You are condoning evil. The reason why I say you are condoning evil is because when you see something color white, you call it color black. Because if you if you agree with me that Mazen Namdekano never committed any crime against any law in Nigeria, if you will agree with me, you wouldn't be begging the president to pardon Mazen Namdekano. You wouldn't be begging the president to temper justice with mercy. You will be requesting from the president to release your sons. 
because he never committed any crime known to law. Are you paying attention? You should be begging the president to actually, you know, you should be asking the president rather, not begging him. Why are you begging him to release somebody who is innocent? That means, that is to show that no matter which situation, no matter which level you found yourself in this politics that is playing in Nigeria, you will never represent us. You will never request or demand for our right. You will always be asking for, can I please have our right? In the same country that you always say one Nigeria, one Nigeria. Can we please have our right? That is what you are proving to the members of the public. You are pleading to have your right. Your right is something that you request. You don't plead to have your right. You request to have your right or you take your right. As in Ebo Belu go belun ke si bi ebe no go si ebo ge ebe. On kwa kwa ya. Mako to o sidi. Now you are you are asking for your right in a, a country where there is, you know, where they hate you. In a country where they don't want you to exist. In a country where they want all of you to be killed. Is where... And yet you scream for one Nigeria and do you go back to this one Nigeria where you are trying to bring peace. You are begging them to give you your right. If you people know what exactly what you guys are doing, you are not supposed to even, you know, tell Mr. President tamper justice with me. Which Mr. President? What justice? Or based on what? On what ground is it tampering justice with mercy? Because Mazin Namdekanu had never committed any crime. You should be requesting for Mazin Namdekanu to be released because he, he because the reason why he is suffering there is because simply because he's an evil man, he's a Biafran, he opened the eyes of people to understand what is going on. Is that a crime? Then if it is a crime, all these people you call religious leaders should be behind bars because they are opening a lot of people's eyes in, in their own way. That is exactly what is happening. You cannot tell me that you want to be a president and you are begging for it in a country where you call one in a country where you see yourself as a first you know first first class citizen or maybe you are second citizen second class citizen maybe you are second class citizen you people are not telling us the history if there any history that you guys know that we do not know then you let us know about this history that you are begging for your right in your land that is not even, that is unbearable for the ears to hear it. How can you go to, you know, how can you be in your land? You are begging for your right. There is no service that is de delivery done in the east, in the south or in the southeastern region. There is none. And all you are doing is to proving to us. You, you keep proving us right that you claim that you are part of Nigeria, but you do not have anything. You do not have any right. You cannot even come up to say, you know, you can never come up to say that we the elite in the Biafra land is waking up to demand for the release of our own because he never committed any crime. But rather, you will be begging Mr. President to release somebody who has never committed any crime. 
it is it is actually you know when i listen to it when i look at it i don't understand it it makes me you know it like it confirmed to me that there is nothing that you people will be able to achieve in that contraption called nigeria because you people keep proving us right and you requested you asking for release of mazen namdekano you pleaded he gave you an answer he, the court must decide the fate you went ahead again you are pleading again selling yourself for 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 for, for no gain you are guys are actually selling yourselves for no gain There is something, there is a difference between, you know, knowing the truth and not knowing the truth. And there is also a difference from, you know, between knowing the truth and choosing to turn a blind eye or choosing to act like it, the truth is no longer the truth. And yet you chose to, you, you claim that you are with us. No, 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 no. Because all this shenanigan presidency 2023, they promise all of you in the in the in their cabals to go and mess up in Biafra land, you will be getting presidency. How many people are going to ascend that throne of presidency in Nigeria? How many of you at once? It is only one of you, but all of you were pre promised presidency. It is that time that you people need to start using your brain. It is that time that you people need to start waking up your consciousness because you people, your consciousness is it is no fast asleep. If your consciousness is not fast asleep, I don't believe that you know you people will be making this you know mistakes that you people are making all the time. Fulani, Fulani controlling all of you people, you know, promising more than three people presidency in 2023, <laughs> you know, as if three of you will go, will go into the seat once. No, you people need to, you know, you need to look back to check where you began and what you have achieved in the approach you are using. You don't use the same approach and, and expect to get the same result. The whole world is waking up except the political leaders in Nigeria, except the political leaders in Africa. The whole world is waking up. You people are expecting for the message to be, you know, I don't know how you expect the message to be preached to you for you to understand what time is it. The whole world is waking up. You people are still going fast asleep. You don't ask for your right. You demand for your right. You do not ask for your right you demand it except if it is not your right except if they are doing you a favor don't compromise yourselves don't make yourself be belittled let me tell you a secret of white supremacy the secret of a white supremacy is that whenever you keep asking for what belongs to you they will believe that it is it does it, it doesn't really belong to you and that is the same mentality. That is the same mentality that this political elite Fulani is using on you people. You don't need to say, please give me my, can, can I please have my own share? No, you can't say, please, can you have your own share? Your share is supposed to be given to you without you asking. So if it is not given to you because, without you asking, now you demand it. That you will come and say, uh, can you please, uh, uh, please uh, tamper justice with mercy. Justice with mercy of what? All Mazen Namdekano was asking for, and he's still asking for, is give us Biafra. Give us Biafra. Biafra existed before Nigeria. It existed before Nigeria. Now, 
you people are asking now, begging. So, since when is when I ask you to give me my right to become a become now a, a crime that now you uh, that a crime that you need to go and ask for president, please, because we ask to give you we ask Nigeria to give us our freedom or Biafra. Now we have become a criminal and this criminal we need to nail down to nigeria you know whoever that is there to say please release us we are no longer going to ask for biafra again no that is not how it works you people need to know how to ask for your right you people need to, need to know how to demand for your right if you don't demand for your right you will never get it that is the reason why the same white supremacy you know, the same people that introduced white supremacy is the same people that introduced what is called rallying, civil disobedience, protest. Because that is when you know you are demanding for your right. You are not asking. Go out there. Because you've been asking all your life. How many of them did they do ever since you started asking none of them they did not give you any of this right ever since you started asking for them do you know what they do rather what they do rather is that whenever you start asking for this right they will rather you know brush you off because you don't have the solid ground you don't have the authority you don't have the authority to show that what you are asking for is yours that is it and they will keep sweeping you under the carpet they will keep marginalizing you if you do not change your approach and that approach you need to change is to understand that the nigeria is not for you nigeria is not for you now let me bring to you this video let me bring to you this video the reason why i want to bring to you this video is for you to see that <clears throat> the terrorists that you are fighting they are telling you whom you are now this video I know so many people must have come across this video, but let us touch on this video before we come back to what we are talking about. Now, and coming back to what we are talking about, we are going to extend it for you to understand exactly what is going on, for you to understand what you need to do to get what you want from this contraption called Nigeria. I am going to give you a typical example because they will keep using that same approach. That same approach, they will be using it on you. And it is another way of divide and rule strategy. Another means of divide and rule strategy. If you do not come up, scream and start telling them, if you do not demand it, they will never give it to you. Now, let us see this video first. Before I bring you to... <clears throat> to where i want to bring you okay no now let me show you something very important something very important i'm going to show you something very <clears throat> important so that you will decide by yourself as per what exactly you want or how you understand things. Just one moment.
today, 6th of May 2022, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has delivered its judgment on the subsisting boundary dispute between Imo State and Imo State. Now, I hope that so many of you know about this dispute. So many of you know about this dispute between Imo State and the River State. Of course you do. The dispute of oil, whether it belongs to Imo State or whether it belongs to, you know, River State. Let us actually listen to it and see what the verdict is. Over the ownership of some oil wells at the Akiri and Mbidi oil fields. Let us recall the following disputed claims to the location and ownership of some oil wells at the Akiri and Mbidi oil fields between Imo and River State in 1999. The governors, the excellencies, Archie K. And Dr. Peter, Peter Audley, respectively, worked out a political settlement and mutually settled for a 50 50 percent beneficial sharing of the derivation process accruing from these wells pending the proper demarcation of the boundaries between the two states by the National Boundary Commission. Why did this put up? Why did this put in Nothing was done by the, the National, National Boundary, Boundary Commission, Commission to demarcate the boundaries of the two states and establish the proper location and title to, to, to the disputed oil wells. wells. However, instead, instead of instigating the National Boundary Commission, Commission to do the right thing, former Governor Emeka Yedion of Imo State, shortly after assuming office, rejected the subsisting 50-50 percent sharing formula and made provocative claims to the exclusive ownership of the entire Akere and Indigo oil wells. In order to actualize these curious claims, he still wrote a letter dated August 2019 to President Muhammad Buhari and requested for the default of the sum of 15 billion naira from River State to the Imo State as backlog of accrued proceeds from the 13% derivation revenue of the same oil wells. Acting on the main head of the letter, Mr. Mr. President warranted a letter to be written to the revenue modernization, allocation, and fiscal commission one fact through his late chief of staff, Mr. Mr. Abba Kerry, to alter the status quo against in favor of Igbo State without reference to the subsisting disputes and agreement between the two states. Did you hear that? By this scrutus, Did you hear that? Great chief of staff, I hope you heard that. Mr. Abakari, okay. to alter the status quo against... Let me push it back a, a little state, bit so that the you will understand what is going on. Allocation and fiscal commission run fact through his late chief of staff, Mr. Abakari, to alter the status quo against in favor of Igbo State without reference to the subsisting dispute and agreement between the two states. Mm -hmm. Surprised by this scrutus, surprised by the surreptitious plots and collusive actions of the government of Igbo State under Emeka mm Hedeha -hmm. and the National Boundary Commission to overreach the legal interests of River State. That means that when they were, you know, pressing hope who's or them were there. Hope who's or them were, you know, Abba Kiyari, Abba Kiyari was acting as if they are going to allocate, you know, those things to Imo State. When it is still fresh, trying to use hope who's or them were, promising him heaven on earth. That is exactly what is going on here. But let us see how the table is turning. In the disputed oil wells, the River State government opted to approach the court for a just and lasting resolution. 
Accordingly, we first applied to the Federal High Court, Abuja, and among other reliefs, successfully challenged the power and authority of Mr. President to give directives to the RAMFAC and or interfere in any manner whatsoever mm -hmm. with the distribution of public revenues from the distributable pool account, including the Federation account. Not satisfied with the positive ruling of the Federal High Court, the most state government appealed to the Court of Appeal and lost. We then proceeded against the government of Imo State and the Supreme Court in a fresh suit for a final and conclusive determination of the boundary dispute between our two states. In approaching the Supreme Court in this matter, we believe that the dispute between the two states and the contentious issues are such that the court can judicially, justly, and expeditiously determine with available facts and supporting evidence, including valid administrative maps, substituting judgments, and other relevant documents. And so, the Supreme Court has finally and conclusively resolved the dispute and granted full and exclusive ownership of all the disputed OUS in our Korean Middle East mm -hmm. to River State. Did you hear that? They have allocated all those oil wells to River State. <laughs> when they finish, use you. And let me tell you the reason why they have allocated this. It is not because of justice system. It is not because of appeal they went to. The reason, the real reason behind them allocating this oil well to that place was because Mwike started giving them. Mwike started actually protesting against the federal government. You don't understand. Most of them, they use IPOB to shine in one way or the other. They started protesting against the federal government. Now, federal government, now see. Because if you are not up and running, if you are not demanding it, you will never get it. If you are asking it, you will never. Sorry, if you are not, if you, if you are asking for it, you will never get it. You must demand for it. One way or the other. That is the reason why they say the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent people take it by force. When you continue to go and take money, asking you are in Niger Delta, you are in coastal region, you are there, you are there, you take money, you go into the bush to make a video, say you <clears throat> want to go through political, whatever, whatever. You should, you know, you should be aware that that small money that you collected is not going to be enough because you know there was a time there was a day i said i asked a very elderly person a very elderly person in biafra land i asked them a question you know no they were asking me uh, but me, we were having an, a, a discussion we were having a discussion a very very elderly experienced person who has a grown child grown children actually grown children now I, I told him that most of the time i make a future plan investment i am building mostly for the future of my kids the reason why i am building on the future of my kids you know no okay i i just narrated it to to to, to, to him i am building on the future of my children you know, do you know what that person told me? An elderly person. Why don't you concentrate now and start building for your life first? Because uh, maybe what if tomorrow that child becomes a, a useless child and uh, squander the money? You suffer for nothing. Wow. I said to myself, wow. That's when I realized how damaged the brain of our elderly people are. I realize how damaged their brain is. Do you know the reason why, why, the reason why white people will continue to rule this world until you change or to, until thy kingdom come? It is because you are not aware what it is to make a generational, you know, freedom, wealth, financial freedom. 
that when your children are growing, they don't need to feel caged. They don't need to start working so hard. They just need to work smart in order to continue carrying on with that generational wealth. Making some, you know, making, putting some things behind, leaving a lot, you know, things behind for your children so that it gives them a stepping ladder. Not like our people. We are running helter skelter because no one left something for us to step up on. And that is making most of our people, they now, because they want to make it at all costs. You find people eating shit in the bush because they want to go and do money ritual. You find our children eating shit. You find your children going to Indonesia, carrying drugs to go to Indonesia, knowing they are going to die. It is because you never leave anything behind for them. And you are expecting, you know, the whole world from them. <laughs> you know, that is part of slavery slavery mentality the elderly person told me no take care of yourself work on you know try to find a, you know do things that are you are is going to help you now because the children you know when they grow up they will they will fight for their own fend for i said to them what are you serious now i had to extend my time during that discussion with him I, I told him, let me tell you the reason why you should be very, very, you know, it is very, very important for you to make, leave things behind or create future plan for your kids. It is number one, because I have imagined my life. I have, I have imagined my life. Had it been my parents left something behind you know, had it been my parents, like they are in political class or maybe did well in business and now be, make a future plan for me, I don't think I will run to overseas to stay. I don't think, you know, I will stay two years, three years, four years, five years without seeing my parents, you know, or my siblings. It is a curse. It is a curse. Things like that does not happen. Then at the end of the day, you look at those things. You know, a, a, an elderly person will tell you, no, don't, don't do any future plan for your children. And tomorrow they will say, what an elderly person. Sit down and see. If you climb a tree, you cannot see it. Those, those type of advice are part of it. They are part of it. And I, I believe it is not only him that will be thinking like that. These are the people we are making our leaders. These are the people we are going to make our leaders to bring us into the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> people who will advise you not to fend for your to children or for your you know future because they might become useless and language the money and you suffered in vain but a white man will take up life insurance a white man will take up you know insurance plans that will make sure that when there are no more their children will never ever try to suffer or try to make you know some some drastic you know, move that will jeopardize their life or that will cage their lives. They understand what future is. They make plan for them. Now, elderly person in the zoo is now telling me, no, don't. And tomorrow they tell you, you must respect your elders. You must respect the elders. Who knows what respect is? Because there are some elders you will be respecting. They might not even understand that, you know, what respect, you know, that you are respecting them because they don't know what respect is. Our elderly people are damaged in their brain. Believe you me, they need help. They need seriously help. They need serious help. 
Now, get, get, coming back to what we are before we digressed, you see the way Fulanese are using you people. The way they are using you people. They place hope also, they more back here, later back here. Now, you know, pro, you know, they gave hope also, they more high hopes that they are going to, you know, allocate that to Imo State. So that the you know the allocation will be will be big. Now, this one started killing in Obibo. Are you paying attention? Because they saw that Hope Uzodema was killing, and that is the reason why Hope Uzodema was getting distance. You know, was getting favor, not actually getting it. Was getting favor from these people. Then this man started killing in Obibo. They started, he started killing in Obibo. After killing in Obibo, <laughs> nothing happened. The judiciary was not doing it right. They were not doing it in his favor. After killing, now he realized, no, I, I, I ain't going to kill no more. Let me just start pushing a protest. A protest, he would start telling you that the liver state must collect their own revenue. You know, that is a protest. He started demanding for their right. He started speaking in a way that will expose the federal government. <laughs> that is the reason why today justice works in his favor. The reason why I am reminding you of this is that if you have ears here, all you old people that claim that you know something. You know nothing. You know nothing. Sorry to say that to you. You guys don't know nothing. That is the reason why they will sit on your, on your, on your right. Step on it. You will be begging them, can I please have it? Stepping on your toes. Stepping on your right. You will plead into them, can I please have it? Who did that to you? This type of things that you you people are doing, you know, the you people are disgracing us. You are disgracing us. You are disgracing us, for goodness sake. These are people who will transition us to fourth industrial revolution. He started demanding for it, protesting, including speaking in a way it favors IPOB. Because everyone who uses IPOB to shine. When you see that you have attacked IPOB, you didn't get what you want. You will start now speaking the truth. Once you speak the truth about IPOB in Nigeria, you will get what you want in Nigeria. That is how it is. Once you start speaking the truth, that IPOB is, a, is fighting a just cause. If there is anything you have asked the federal government that they have never done before, they will start doing it so that you will cease to speak that truth. And that is the reason why I am asking those who are asking President Buhari, please tamper, tamper justice with mercy. You are a coward. You are a coward. You cannot ask um, Boko Hari to tamper justice with mercy. When you know Mazen Namdekan never committed any crime. He never committed any crime. And you know it. Why are you now acting as if he did? Ask him Buhari to tamper justice with mercy. Do you know what the, the, do you know the exact meaning of what you are saying? You people are disgracing us. You people are disgracing us. And you believe that this government will ever take you seriously. I've given you an example. When you see a white person, a white man, or a white woman, you know, for you to understand the way they live, when you see them, maybe there is something that they have, it, it is very, very important to them. And, you know, they cannot... You know, they, you know, maybe it is yours. They pick it up. Maybe it is yours. And they take liking to it. And they are not sure whether it is yours or not. 
The only way you will prove that it is yours is if when you start demanding it from them, not asking them. If you demand it from them, they will know it is yours. If you ask them, please, can I have it? Please, please, please. They will know, no. Why is he asking? Why is he pleading with me in, on something that belongs to him? Why are you pleading with the Buhari to tamper justice with mercy? What justice? Do you know what to tamper justice with mercy means? It means that Mazen Namdekan committed a heinous crime, that it is only a tampering justice with mercy that will help him. If Nigeria judiciary is working, Mazen Namdekan is not even supposed to be in, in, a, in a DSS holding cell in the last 10 months. In a holding cell in the last 10 months. Do you know it is the biggest slap, biggest insult in the faces of all of you who are claiming tamper justice with mercy? I don't buy that idea. I know you might mean well, but I am now telling you that you don't need to ask. You need to demand. When you demand, they give it to you. We just started, started protesting, rebelling. Against this government. That is the reason why Supreme Court changed. You are asking Buhari, please. They he think uh, that if you ask him, please, uh, Bin Tanyaku will now say, because elderly man uh, in Biafra land ask him, please, let me now tamper justice with you. Do you think it works like that? It does not work like that. You need to know your right and stand on it. Stand firm on your right. That's the only way it is going to be given to you. Because what you guys are doing, it is actually disgracing. It is, it is a disgrace to the entire public, to the entire people that you people are presiding over. Mr. President, please stamp out justice with mercy. I don't like to hear those words. Those are insultive words to me. They are insulting. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Let me ask the world. Can you imagine? In Nigeria, as it is, in the eastern region of Nigeria, can you imagine that when people, you know, when the unknown government, this unknown government that you people are hearing all over the place, you people are hearing about unknown government, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you people see this unknown government. We call them boogeymen. We call them the people who are causing insecurity in our land. We call them all sorts of names. Unknown government. You hear about them. You call them all sorts of names. You say they are the ones killing people. They are the ones killing innocent people. This and that too. But this same unknown government. To my greatest surprise, I'm trying to find a video. To my greatest surprise, <laughs> I found a video where this same unknown government was passing. People are hailing and chanting for them. So people that you people are carrying in the news 24 hours in a day, and saying that these people that are, you know, unknown government, they are causing chaos, they are killing innocent people, they are disgracing, they are doing that, doing this. The same people that the same innocent people are hailing, chanting for, which means they feel safe around unknown government, more than they feel safe around police and army. And you come back to tell me. <laughs> That there is that there, there is nothing wrong in Nigeria. You come back to tell me that the government knows what they are doing. You come back to tell me that there is no tyranny in Nigeria. It means that you know people feel safe with unknown government. People feel that when they when they see the presence of unknown government, they can even count to their money on the road. That is exactly what it looks like. When they see the presence of a non government, they can even, you know, feel, feel safe. They can even sleep on the street without fear of uh, anything. But when they see military, they hide their money. When they see military, they hide their, they hide their, their face. When they see anything that is Nigeria enforcement or law enforcement, they will 
start running helter skelter because they don't feel safe crossfire you know cross bullet can hit anybody they can start shooting at any time because they were boko haram recruited so people when they see onongo men they feel safe they start chanting for them they even start praying for them is that not a message to you the world the world that is full of hypocrisy the world that is full of hypocrites is that not a direct message to you the people of the world britain is that not a direct message let me actually bring the video let us you know see the video before i go to this you know news of the coming out from britain before we go to that news that is coming out from britain we are going to go to that news let me go to okay i think i got it let me bring that video for you to see now let us see why people are chanting and hailing <clears throat> the unknown government i hope that video came in i just hope the video came in okay there you go now let us see Man, no way on a shop, no one will get to me. Did you hear that? People are clapping for non government. <laughs> You cannot tell me that the whole community they are criminal. That is the reason why they like a non-government more than the law enforcement. You cannot tell me that. That you see how safe they are. But if it is the presence of military, if it is the presence of police here, if it is the presence of uh, civil defense or civil disobedience, if it is their present here, you will not find anybody visible here. You will not find nobody visible here. But tomorrow they will tell you, oh, non men are criminal. Police and law enforcement are good people. They are securing our land. Are you, are you listening to yourself? Does that make sense to you? Don't you understand this message? Or are you stupid? Can't you understand a simple handwriting on the wall? These are oh, non men. People are clapping, selling them. Oh, no, man. Oh, no, man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But every day you will see videos making round. Um, oh, no, man, shoot this one. Oh, no, man, shoot that one. Without you knowing who are behind those masks calling themselves or non government because they know that our people are safe and then you know even in the presence of a non government and that is the reason why they are promoting the activities of a non government every all over the place in the media because they feel safe around them but they don't feel safe as around the law enforcers is that not is that not funny is that not you know is it not surprising those are the, the questions you need to start asking yourselves. Those are things that you need to start, you know, discovering from yourself. Those are things that you must, you know, try to decode what exactly is happening. When your people feel safe in the, la in the hands of the ones you call criminal and feel unsafe in the hands of the ones that you call savior.
you will judge it yourself. So I am calling on Britain. You know, Britain, there is a news coming out of Britain today. Let me try to find that news as well. I am actually calling on them. They say that they are excluding Biafrans, IPOB, people of indigenous people of Biafra from asylum seeking in the UK, from the list of asylum seeking or seekers in the UK or desirable, if I may put it that way, from the list of the desirables, if you must, if I put it that way, maybe you will understand it. Let me find that news that we may understand where it is coming from or digest it rather. Just one moment. I'm trying to find that news so that we will know what we are reading. Okay, here. Here we go. Oh, no. Okay. Let's open the news. And let's open the news. Let's bring it to your screen. Let's open it. So that we will give our response to Britain. Now I want you to look at this and you should read as well with me. You should read with me. UK bar IPOB, UK bars IPOB order from seeking asylum. UK bar IPOB order from seeking asylum. Did I? Okay, now I want you to pay attention. Let us read. And we will now know the, the authorities, the authorities in the UK, in the United Kingdom, have excluded members of the indigenous people of. Biafra, IPOB in bracket, and some other secessionists from seeking asylum in their country. In its update asylum policy, published in May and cited by Channel TV. Okay. The UK explained that it took the decision as a result of the recent activities of such people as reported in Nigeria. Okay. According to Britain, Nigeria authorities have since proscribed IPOB as a terrorist group, while the movement for actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masop, has also been banned, but not designated the same status the same status as the former. Are you paying attention? I want you to know where, where this thing is coming from. You should understand where this thing is coming from and where it is going. IPOB is proscribed as a terrorist group by the Nigeria government and members of the group and its paramilitary wing the Eastern Security Network, created in December 2020, have reportedly committed human rights violation in Nigeria. The document said, Masop has been banned, but is not a proscribed terrorist group in Nigeria. It too has reportedly been involved in violating, in violence clashes with the authorities, if 
clashes with the authorities if a person has been involved with IPOB and other affiliated group Masop or any other Biafran group that incites or uses violence to achieve its aim. Decision makers its aim. Decision makers must be cons must consider whether one or more of the exclusion clauses under the refugee convention is applicable. Persons who commit human rights violation must not be granted asylum. Wow. Are you paying attention? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So, all this while, we have been, you know, advocating, we've been saying it, you know, UK are now taking it because we are exposing their evil agenda in Nigeria. That is the reason why they are now telling you that Nigeria proscribed you. Nigeria proscribed IPOP under what circumstances? Under what law? They proscribe this. They refuse to um, go, go carry on with the hearing. But they come to tell you that they, they are now committing violation of human rights. What violation of human rights? Is it the video that is making around on social media, people killing cow? Is it the violation of human rights? Because the last time I checked, you people value animal life more than human life. At least they are killing cow, the military are killing us. Or you people value cow life more than we human people, human being or be black lives. Or full any cow. That is exactly what <laughs> I don't understand. The truth. We have the world of today where the truth will be oppressed and suppressed to die off but lies will make round you know be promoted on social media across the world the world will buy it but when you speak the truth it becomes a conspiracy theory it becomes incitation you know when i think about the way this world is i just call on god to destroy this world once let everybody know their fate let this world just turn upside down. Let everybody know their faith. Because there is nothing else that will change the mind of these evildoers. Lucifer themselves. That's what they are. They tell you they are no longer granting you asylum. They will not grant you asylum anymore. Just because of what? Because you are killing a cow in the bush. You are telling Fulani that is, you know, sleeping with their cows, that you don't want their meat. Because you are telling federal uh, government of that uh, contraption called Nigeria, created by Lord Lugard in 1914. Just because you are telling them that you want back, you want to go back to whom you were before they came. You want to have your freedom. Because your, your true identity is your freedom. And the UK see you as a violation, uh, see it as a violation of human rights. Because you, Katriona Lang is delivering, you know, lies. Is feeding the world lies. The life of people in Ukraine matters more than our life because they are white people. Is it what you people are trying to tell us? The life of people in Ukraine matters more than our lives because they are white people. How many people have died in Ukraine? Do you know how many people are dying in Biafra land day by day? In the hands of the military that, uh, that was, in the hands of the Boko Haram that was integrated into the military formation. No, you people cannot see that. Injustice. The world is full of injustice. You know, we pray that this world must turn upside down. In, in fact, let the world be destroyed. Let everybody know their fate. Because the way it is, all of you full of hypocrites. All of you are hypocrites. Britain. We used to see white people as the best people on the planet. But only to realize that uh, it is quite the opposite. 
Hey, Catriona Lion, Lion, when he come back, he feed you lies. Russia is there. Russia is actually, you know, best people more than all of you in that Western world. Russia is be better people than you people. Even though they are committing whatever they are. They are better than all of you <laughs> put together. Because you cannot see the truth and speak it out. Rather, you cover it just to, to make sure. Because, or, of course, the, you... We our lives does not matter. We that are calling on you people to come and you know, we are not calling knowing that you people are going to answer us. We are just reminding you people because by the time we are going to go work, you people will not say that uh, we did not call on you. If you cannot defend us, we will defend ourselves. We are going to defend ourselves, no matter what it takes. The uh, highest thing you people will do is to give Nigeria fighter jet to, to commit genocide, just like you did in 1967. You give them fighter jet to commit genocide on us. That is the highest thing. That is the highest thing you people are going to do. And which is not going to work for you this time. Because the hand of God is with us. It was not the right time in 1967. But guess what? It is the right time now. There is nothing you can do about it. You can go hug a transformer. Biafra must come. Listen to the people, the Nigeria you are defending. Listen to Nigeria you are defending. Listen to. Alia, welcome to Nigeria. Company Buhari, welcome. And my people that say native than be. The whole Nigeria is a thief. The whole Nigeria, any man, any language, any language for English, for Nigeria, for Fulani, for Hausa people, Igala people, Nyamure people, Idoma people, everybody from there, and see native than be. This is way than they do. They are not going to do anything. Now just go spoil Nigeria. Even though be spoiling, nothing will go happen for Nigeria. These people don't arrange for fire for Nigeria. These people, they get any, many, many bad, bad something where than they happen for village. They say they don't carry network for, for this Zampara state. So this thing, where than they carry, they know they do anything. I just find them, say, them, see road, where than they go for village, made a fire them. Made a fire people and police and soldier and vigilante and everybody where they carry small gun. These people, they know they carry small gun. Now Rokel and Raja, every big, big one, where you know for Nigeria. Now then, this here where you see these people, they have bomb the Nigeria. No be only gum where the hold. The whole gum and bomb where the come any village where the come food. Now just this village, you won't spoil all. Everybody won't die. But this thing where I want to tell you, this general Buhari, this messenger, I want happy may reach for your side. Where you can't reach for your side. You feed up your people, helping, supporting Nigeria for the meeting. This thing, where they go do? Everybody may happy for Nigeria. The one spoil, the one right thing. Everybody may happy for this note of where the Concord. The Concord, this thing network, but this network where the Concord. Nothing they have room for them. That one not the for them for Nigeria. Naka women, Amo Maimi, Ma Joji, Ma Kai, a Bible, a Bayamoto, Ma Joji, Ma
Did you hear that? Thank you very much, Gideon. Did you hear that? They are telling you that Nigeria is corrupt. These are Boko Haram. These are terrorists. Telling you Nigeria is corrupt. Any place that all of them are corrupt. They claim they have caught the network in Zamfara State that will not that will make the Boko Haram not to have communication with their head or their whichever that is controlling them or to have you know but still Boko Haram they are having everything they want there is no such thing they claim that they have cut the network they are you know fighting against Boko Haram but they are fighting against nothing when Buhari told you the fight against Boko Haram is fight against the North. They are now telling you that uh, there is every, you know, indirectly, there is everything they want in Zamfara State. To show you that who are the people sponsoring this terrorism, they are government. Why would they come and lie that they have cut network? But Boko Haram are still making phone call, living their lives, terrorizing villages. And you tomorrow they will tell you that they have given them a moral blow. They have given them a mortal blow. But where is that mortal blow? <laughs> how many how did you experience? Did you see the mortal blow? That is it. Britain. That is the country that you are protecting. The country that lies. Everything that these people said here. It's nothing but the truth. Absolutely the truth. That is how it is. Now you are saying Biafra, IPOB, they have violated human rights. Violated which human rights? Are you talking about IPOB or are you talking about autopilot? Because you people, all of you, that is the reason why you added mass up there also. So that it will look like you people are just uh, doing it. Tomorrow now, I won't be surprised if you come and say IPOB is proscribed because you Britain are full of corruption. You people that are stakeholders in Britain that have that are you know still promoting this oligarchy in Nigeria. You people are all corrupted evil. You are corrupt more than Nigeria itself. You just appear to be innocent in front of your people. Because they know what you know. Of course, people in Nigeria does not know what you know. Because you've been oppressing them all this while. But enough is enough. When you begin to look for your right, you become a bad child. But we call us a bad child, we don't care. We are going to get our freedom, whether you like it or not. God made Africa and gave it what it, you know, gave it what it is. You people came to change it and call us what we are not. Now we have realized that we've been answering what we are, we are not supposed to answer. Today you are, you are telling us you are banning us from asylum. Do you think your asylum is taking us to heaven? Your asylum is actually engaging us the more. Leave us, don't give us asylum. We will go home and fight our fight. That is a that is a exactly, you know, a hand of God. You will believe that you are hurting the people of Biafra. You are promoting Biafra. That's I can assure you. You are promoting Biafra. Because if you do not create an avenue that will make us to be running away from our land, instead of saying there to face what is facing us, there is no way we can, you know, you, you will be thriving or you'll be winning. In this your psychological war that you are fighting against us you cannot so you know if you like don't give us a visa it is a testimony imagine only in nigeria or in africa there are people if you get a visa to uk you go and give testimony in church is that not a, a curse it is a curse a visa to run away from your country you go and give testimony in church that is a serious curse and you are telling us you are you are not giving us asylum anymore. No, we want to. We want us to beg, fall down, and start crying for you. No, you are mistaken. You are uplifting our spirit to know that what we are fighting for is a just cause, and we are not going back. 
We cannot go back. We continue to fight until we achieve what we are fighting for. We don't need your, your asylum. Your asylum to, to make our people do menial jobs. To make our people do your menial job. Do your dirty with getting penny. No, we don't need it. We need freedom. At least you have deprived of, 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 of your asylum. Now you cannot deprive of us of freedom. That will make us to stop coming to your country. It's if East does not work, wars must work. You cannot refuse to walk and, uh, you know, you know, you refuse to move away from people who want to walk. No. Enough is enough. The anger of Chukwu Kikabiyama is going to rise. It's going to give you people first sign to show that this decision that you people made is actually in favor of us. You believe that you made it to intimidate or to destroy our spirit or to make us or to give us a sign that you might proscribe us tomorrow. Whether you proscribe us tomorrow, whether Katriona Lang send all this further information to you guys to proscribe, whether you proscribe us, we will continue to do what we are doing. Rather, we will all go back home and do it on the ground. And you will understand that that thing that makes you people to, to love Nigeria the most, you might start losing it. Because we will now start acting like the ones that you proscribe. You will start acting like the terrorists. Since we are not a terrorist, if you call us a terrorist, we will act like a terrorist. Since being on media space, asking for my right, is now violation of human rights. You don't see that on non-government that you claim that IPOB. People, communities are happy for them, are happy with them, are happier and they feel safe around them. More than they feel safe in your, in your military tyranny that you people are sending in our land. In all the security apparatus that our people are feeling safe in the hands of a non-government. More than those people. Who is fooling who here? Britain, be warned. Chukwu Kikabiyama say, I should tell you to be warned. Because that thing you people are cool cooking in Russia, in in uh, in those places, <laughs> you are cooking it, it might destroy you. And the only thing that will trigger it more is the step that you make against us. You might see it as a fallacy, but that is the truth. You can block your ears like Pharaoh did. You can block your ears like Pharaoh, Pharaoh did 2,000 years ago. You block your ears. Block them. When the plague come, when the plague hits, you will understand that beyond the river of Ethiopia, we are going to take our offering there. That is Biafra land, the zero latitude and zero longitude, where there is freedom, where there is, you know, heaven. By the time you will come to see us in our heaven, we will remind you of this day. That is how it is. And I want you to understand that what goes around comes around. And you know that the only thing constant in life is change. You've been enslaving us in the past 400 years. Now our consciousness is awoken. Now you are trying to get it, send it back to sleep. You can never send the consciousness back to sleep with a gun. You can only send it back to sleep with its demands or nothing. That is how it is. Our Eastern elders, our Eastern governors, I want you to start demanding for your right. Stop asking for your right. It is your right. It is what you need. You, it is your right. Do you know what is right? UK is telling people that you, people are violating human rights. What is violation of human rights? Killing cow in the bush. Is it violation of human rights? Or are you you're supposed to name it for what it is? Violation of animal rights. We don't want those cow. Because it is through those cow that the terrorist is taking over bushes in Nigeria. 
Some of these terrorists are in that cow. Some cow are terrorists themselves. You haven't seen the casualty they have caused. You have not seen the casualty they have caused. A scooter driver, a scooter rider moving, the cow or bicycle rider, the cow hitting to that person, it flew up and down, dead straight, without breathing. That is a cow. It's a terrorist cow. And you expect it to, you expect us to allow it in our bushes. Why don't you guys leave your cows, bushes, your cattle? Let me speak it in a language that you may understand. Why don't you leave those cattle in your, in where you people are ranching them? Set them loose so that they will be all over the place in UK or in Britain. Set the, cut them loose. Then let us understand that your 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 fight, you know, for animal rights because I don't see any human here. Animal rights is just. You don't hear about banditry, you don't hear about them because before you people make a move, we have already known your move. Violation of human right. What is that human right? We are IPOB. We are not autopilot. We are IPOB. We are not autopilots and can never be. We have leadership. We have rules. We have modus of operandi. We have discipline above all. So when you talk about violation of human rights, you should call whichever organization that did it. So don't think you can fool us. You can never fool this generation. You can never mess with this generation. We are God-forgiven generation. We are God-forgiven generation. Of course, some of them, some of us, mix blood. They can never be forgiven. God is going to destroy them when the rain comes. God will destroy them, of course. There is no two ways about it. And I hope I have delivered that message. And I am going to leave it here. Those who are the stakeholders, if you have ears, hear it. We are not backing down. Even if you like, call us terrorists. As long as we know, we are not terrorists. We have not engaged into any terrorism or terrorist activity. We are talking freedom. And the government, the stakeholders in Nigeria are now sabotaging us, creating on their own fashion, call on non-government to go and kill our people, to go and uh, establish it at home, to go and uh, enforce it at home. And you come to tell us we have violated human rights, therefore we don't need your, we, you're not giving us asylum. We do not need your asylum. We do not need your, your. that is your holding cell. An asylum seeker is, it is like somebody that is in a holding cell. We don't need it. Give us freedom. That's what we need. Give us freedom. We stop coming to your place. Because you are holding our freedom. You amalgamated us with Nigeria, which we are not Nigeria. And they're making us to run from that structure you created there. Running to you, seeing you as our God, our Savior. So the, the destroy that lay down principle you made in the name of amalgamation. Destroy that cor contraption you created in the name of amalgamation. Let us see if we are going to look for you or you are going to look for us. Because you know what we are. We know what we are capable of when we are free-minded, when we are able to control our, our, our economy, our lives, you know what we can do. You people will be the one looking for us. We no longer do. We wouldn't be looking for you because we are going to make our land great with this generation. A generation, a forgiving generation of the tribe of Jacob, of the tribe of Israelite. A forgiving generation. And then you are telling us, you are actually insulting yourselves by telling us that you will not, you know, you will not give us asylum anymore. Shame on you guys. Great beer friends all over the world. I am going to leave it here. 
and we're going to call it a day, we have sent the message, share the video, and uh, make sure the video get to the right people. We are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook, we are live on Twitter, and I want you to, um, before we call it a day, uh, Mazi Chisom, I see you are here. Please, Mazi, Mazi Chisom, we are, we are going to Rapture Media tomorrow, please. I want you to be there. Please, if you can send me a message, send me a message on my WhatsApp, on my WhatsApp uh, number. I'll send me your picture so that we make the banner and post it in the morning. We are going to Rapture Media uh, maybe around between 1 and 2 o'clock. Between 1 and 2 o'clock, we will notify you. Please send me a message. Send me a message so that I will know what to do. Uh, Mazi, see you too. Uh, please, uh, we want you to join us on Rapture Media tomorrow between 1 and 2. I will post the time in the morning. I will post the time in the morning so that we will continue to preach this gospel for freedom. And then it is from me and to you Stay safe and stay informed until we meet again. Shalom.